here we are. This field right here is a six acre field and it's a disaster this year. Uh, got big huge bare spots in it where the seed just didn't come up when we planted it. it got rain all the time when I planted and I think they drowned it. But I'm gonna skate around the bare spots and go get the beans that are in the spot sweaters beans. I'm hoping to run right straight up through here and then turn and go up side there. Uh, I better get out walking. I know. Drive right off in a sinkhole back here. Let's go see what we got. All right. Let's just kind of walk through here. Huh, that's not bad at all. That's traditionally a really wet spot in this corner. It's pretty solid. The beans are hard to walk through. They're tall and laid over. But the ground's pretty solid. This is a new kind of weed thing here. I know what it is. It's a berry. But we ain't had these things here in forever. And if they touch you, they stick right to you. Get out of my bean field. Whoa. Okay. There's another one over there. Yeah, this ground not bad at all. Let's see. I've seen bunches and bunches and bunches of cuckleberries. I'll lay them down. It looks... Maybe I won't pick them up. You see how pitiful this is here? I was kind of heartbroken. I put some expensive seed back here. See that? We ain't been back here. Ooh, that spot's soft. Maybe it'll pull through here. If you were watching, it was last year or the year before, we were doing some serious ruts right in through here. I mean, there's a lot of beans out here on the plants that are here. <coughs> Might go up there and go over and loop the loop on this short spot and see what happens. All right, because this right here, it does squish a little, but I got new tires. Yeah, let's go for it. Okay, a little out of breath after walking way back over here from the back side of the farm. And when I say back side, other side of that first tree line is where I'm at. Okay, we got a cold F600 Ford product here. Let's see if it'll crank. That thing right there called a manual choke. It's got a sweet spot. That's about it right there. Tack about, uh, let's see, what am I seeing? It's at about 1400 right now. I want to get it down a little bit more. That, that's too cold. I don't have to operate the gas pedal. But don't dare move this truck when it's cold. Plus the fact it's got beans on it. I don't have, I don't have any idea how many. Lost counter number of hoppers I got out of here. But I'm so delighted to be through with that. Oh, got a lot of work done this week. Today's Thursday. Oh, that straw chopper thing, man, that is awesome. I mean, you can see it on the field out there. It's just evenly distributed. No more little lines. Well, not this side. That's where you got the lines, but back over that way. The camera's not going to show it to you. Found a wet spot in this field. My new tires pulled right through it. I felt it do that little sideways thing and I uh, saw the head start to go down. I've had all the dirt in that combine I want for one day so I lift, got that head up and let it pull and the tires walked right on through it. Particular death. I didn't, you know, stop to see what it looks like. I'll probably go back up there and look. All right, let's see if this thing will, will go. I need a gear, please. I would like first. Thank you. All right. Yeah, there we go. 1973 Ford F600. Uh, there's a video a long time ago about how I got this truck. 1970 John Deere 4020. 1974 4000. That's a great.
there any gear grinding there. The reason I don't jump to second is this farm path through these woods is rough. Don't die. Thank you. It's washed out on this side over here. It's a pretty good size rut. We should be able to get through here. Oh, that was fun. Alright, get over in the center. Need some gravel on this road. Alright, she did it. Alright, steer one hand, that's fun. Hey, look, somebody left us a combine to play with. Oh boy. this up here. Yeah, that'd be fun. And stop about right there. And get off that choke. Yep, smooth right out after it got a little heat on it. Idle in about, I don't know, eh, I'd say 800. All right, let's go unload this. I was sitting here watching this unload and just kind of thinking about what I had actually encountered in the conditions out in this field. And I had my hands full, so I put the camera down. The You saw how thin the beans were we were walking around, and in those spots I had to put the combine in second gear and just keep my hand on that variable speed. The objective was to attempt to create some type of even flow of material between the rasbar cylinder and the concave so that the beans would shell out. Um, you can see a few pods here and there in this, and it, it wasn't pretty, so didn't get any footage of that. But I managed to get uh, some beans out of the field before conditions changed on me. And it was interesting, it was a challenge, but um, I'm gonna get back out there probably next Thursday. I went back out and um, got me another hopper, you know, not full, but it was a hopper. And it was challenging. It went and got dark on me and I couldn't see far enough ahead to plan ahead for what I was gonna need to do with variable speed. And if you don't keep a consistent flow of material coming through uh, the machine, you don't get good shelling and you get pods in the hopper. And that's not pretty, you don't wanna do that. So I'm sitting here at this time thinking about, do I want to go back out there? I'd hit, as I was just making rounds around the field, I had hit those wet spots and it was a challenge. I kept lifting the head to keep from, you know, taking in another mouthful of dirt or mud in that case. I'd had all the dirt and mud in that machine I wanted for that day. So I basically, I was just thinking, do I want to go back out there? Um, I wanted to, but um, I just decided that it wasn't worth going out there and getting stuck in the dark. And I was getting tired. I'd been in the combine since about 12 noon. So I made the decision to call it quits, even though I didn't have a full load on the truck. I just said, well, that's enough. I'm just going to play it safe and put the combine up, call it a night. We'll get up early in the morning and take this to the mill. Uh, they're calling for rain to come in at lunchtime on Friday, which, you know, that didn't happen. You make your best decisions that you can make and you do what you do based on the decision you made to do. And there I'm sitting there playing with that other top light thinking, well, there's a little more light out there I could see. I mean, I just really wanted to go back out there, but there was this thing inside of me saying, nope, don't do it. And I thought about, well, you know, if I run all those lights and that little fuse I got in there blows, that's what that's going to look like. I think I'll go to the house. So I put it up for the night.
back fill is a it's a thin mess. It's not pretty. But I managed to get two hoppers out of it. Everybody thanks so much for watching. Thanks for riding with me. Thanks for being here subscribed to uh, the channel. I decided to take y'all to the mill with me because there's so many new subscribers this year that you've never seen my trip to the mill. Yeah, that caught my eye when that went by. But guess what? Somehow the camera got its microphone turned off. And I didn't discover it until I got back to the video editor. And that was kind of, uh, well, kind of sad because I wanted you to hear how good the truck was running especially when I was climbing this hill I was fixing to go up. But best I can do now with the footage I've got with no audio is do a little voice overlay and talk about what happened. Well, here we get to the mill. Truck's still running good. It's about a 14, I mean, it's about 16 miles, 14 or 16 miles, one of them two numbers. Anyhow, I pulled in and no line. It was like, wow, I got the whole place to myself. There was a truck up in there unloading, but I was able to roll right up on the scale and hop out and walk into the little mill house there where they do all the grading and weighing and, you know, the administrative type stuff of the transaction of selling beans. So uh, there's a quick look at my little partial load. I would have loved to have had about another uh, 50 bushels on there, but anyhow, I didn't. I was tickled with that. That was my moisture, 12.7. Uh, I sold them some water and didn't get docked for it, so I was happy with that. And uh, that's the weight of the truck. I was, like I said, I'd love to have had another 50 bushels on it. And what he's doing now is going to find out what kind of foreign matter I brought him. He takes that little shaker pan there, and he pours that in there, and he does a little shake, shake, shake thing, and then he dumps that stuff in there. Now, anything on that scale over one, uh, I get docked for. But praise God, 0.66, I got a clean load, no dockage on foreign matter. So I sped this up a little bit. That's not real time. It was about three minutes altogether, but I cut it down to about a minute. That's how I dump out my back door. I just about overwhelmed their uh, receiving pit there, so I have to do it up in stages to keep from making a mess out of the place. And that gets me finished up with that. And uh, got back home in time to clean off the combine. It did eventually rain. It rained good. That combine sitting up there under that shelter with all that dust on it would have made a huge mess. Well, I'll tell you what. Plans are right now, looking at the weather forecast and looking at the time I got off work, I'm going to try to get back out there next Thursday. And I'll do a better job, if y'all will hang with me, of taking a camera with us.